Dave Swift here, clientamp.com, and today I wanna to talk about email, particularly for those folks who still have a website on a shared hosting provider, and they are stuck there because their email is tied to that provider. Now, I think the word is out. Everybody knows that cloud VPSs are the way to go for hosting your website if you have any volume of traffic at all, particularly if you're doing things where dynamic interaction is required. So e-commerce, online courses, membership sites, you really can't do that at any sort of a scale with a cheap shared hosting plan. So one of the places you might consider moving to is a sponsor of this channel and a sponsor of this video, and that is Cloudways. So while we're talking here, I'm just gonna spin up a brand new WordPress website on Cloudways. I've got everything configured. I'm gonna use DigitalOcean as my provider. It's gonna be a four gig server located in New York. It'll cost me 54 bucks a month. All right, I'm gonna launch that. And while I'm launching it, we're gonna talk about some email stuff. So essentially we have three different types of email that maybe your shared provider is taking care of all three of those things, but that might not be in your best interest long-term as your business starts to grow. Let's break it down. What are the three different types of email? Well, first of all, the most obvious one is the emails that you send to other people that you open up your email client and you just, you write the emails and you send them off. Now, this is typically done through a method called SMTP. You might also be using something like Outlook or Google Workspace, but you know, I'm not really focused on those folks for this video. You should continue using that service if it's working for you and you enjoy it. But if you've got a shared provider and they're including the email addresses on that host, well, then you probably want to get out of there sooner than later because recently Google and Yahoo, they've all been cracking down on having very high deliverability standards that most of the time these shared providers are just not following. So what ends up happening is that your personal email ends up in the spam box or the promotion box. And that's just not a good look for a business. So I'm going to address your personal email, but first let's talk about the other two types of email. The second kind is called transactional email and everybody's website sends some form of transactional email, even if you're not doing e-commerce, because chances are you need to have a way to reset passwords because even you might sometime lose your password or have an issue logging in. Something gets corrupted on your password manager if you use one of those things and you just can't get logged in. You need to get one of those password reset emails. But there's other types of transactional emails as well. Stuff like receipts or new account creation emails or just comment notifications. Stuff that is important and you want to hit the inbox. It can't get lost or it makes your business look really bad. And then there's other emails that might not be tied to your server. You actually might be cutting a big check every month to send, and those are gonna be your marketing emails. So I'm talking about platforms here like MailChimp, ConvertKit, ActiveCampaign. These services can cost hundreds or thousands of dollars per month, depending on how much you utilize them. There is a way to reduce those costs significantly, and we'll get into that in this video as well. All right, so those are your three types of emails. We've got personal or work mail, we have transactional email, and we have marketing messages. Shared hosting providers often do the bare minimum to make sure that your emails hit the inbox. So let's see how we can change that if we were to migrate our site over to Cloudways. By the way, if you're interested in doing that, I've got a full link video on how to migrate your site over to Cloudways. All right, so here's my brand new server that I just spun up. And on this server, I've already installed WordPress. In fact, a WooCommerce installation. Now I wanna make sure that I can get personal emails if I were to switch over to Cloudways. So let's take a look at how we can do that. From the left-hand sidebar of Cloudways, you're gonna go down to add-ons. And right here, you're gonna see an option for Rackspace email. That's going to be your personal email that you can utilize with Cloudways. Now, I wanna be clear here that this is just an option that Cloudways provides. You can still continue to use any other third-party service that you like, like Google Workspace or Outlook or you know Zoho, whatever you wanna use, that's still just fine. But if you were using the shared hosting email like on a cPanel setup, you might wanna check out Rackspace. It's a really good service for a very affordable price. Let's spin up an email address. So I'm gonna click into Rackspace and you can see that it's gonna start at just $1 per user per month. That is a heck of a lot cheaper than switching over to Google Workspace where you have to pay at least $6 per month per user and you get a bunch of features, sure, but you might not use all of those features. Adding a mailbox is really easy. Just click on the add mailbox option. You'll choose add mailbox right here. 
enter in the email address that you want to use, set up a password, and if you have multiple emails that you want to add, you can do so all in the same screen. For now, I'm gonna to stick to just the one. I'll hit save changes, and you can see it's gonna add my mailbox. Of course, there's going to be some DNS involved here, and so there's a documentation linked to you right from Cloudways that tells you the four entries you need to make with your DNS provider. Now, before you make these changes, you might want to think about how you're gonna get all of your old emails off of the other platform onto the new one. The good news there is that Rackspace actually has a migration tool for you to utilize. I'll drop a link for this in the description so you can check it out. But essentially, you wanna make sure that you don't delete your old hosting provider where the emails live and create the new accounts over on Rackspace, and then you'll be able to use the tool to move all of your old emails over. After your migration is complete from your old provider over to Rackspace, then you can change your DNS setup to make sure that all new emails are delivered to your Rackspace account. Now, how do you actually view these emails and what type of features are we talking about? Well, just from the Cloudways interface, we have aliases as well as mail forwarding, which means that you can set up multiple emails to go to one inbox. So that's great if you have maybe some role-based accounts or multiple emails that you want to shuttle into a single account, you can do that without having to pay extra. There's also mail forwarding. So if you want to send all of your email someplace else as like a backup, you can definitely do that as well. But now accessing the emails, how does that work? Well, there is a webmail client that you can launch. You'll just use the email address and password you set up over on Cloudways. Hit login, and there you go. Here is your web interface for sending, receiving emails. You even get contacts, calendars, tasks, and notes. It's a full little mini suite of productivity. But for me personally, I am not a webmail type of person. I want to use desktop or mobile applications to check my email. So luckily there is a guide provided by Cloudways showing you how to get started with the most popular applications, even including Gmail. You can get everything shuttled over into Gmail if you like, but there's everything you probably are familiar with like Windows Mail, Outlook, Thunderbird, and iOS Mail. It's gonna work with Mac Mail as well, not just iOS. The guide is really complete with screenshots and step-by-step -step directions. So I'm obviously not gonna go through every single possibility here, but you can be confident that your application will work as long as it supports standard SMTP connections. So the Rackspace add-on from Cloudways covers your personal or work email sending. So you can use any email client you like, only a buck per month per user, and you get 25 gigs of storage. So you probably won't run out for quite a while. Next up, let's talk about those pesky transactional emails. Nothing makes your business look worse than when the receipt hits the spam box. Boy, that's embarrassing. So the problem with this is that when you use a shared provider, they're running a mail server for a thousand different websites. So one site is selling some funky pills and then all of a sudden your site ends up in the spam box because they're originating from the same IP address. Now, we're not gonna allow that to happen with Cloudways because we're gonna use a bulk email provider. And it's very easy to do because Cloudways, again, has an add-on for this. Let me show you what I'm talking about because there's actually a few ways we can address this. So I've got my server here. I can click into it. And then down below, I've got SMTP. This is gonna be for sending those transactional emails. I can choose an SMTP provider right here by choosing either my own SMTP provider or using the Cloudways add-on from Elastic Email. Let me show you that first, and then we'll double back and check out the bring your own options. Once again, we'll head over to the add-ons, and this time we're gonna find Elastic Email. And here I'm gonna click and choose how many emails I want to send per month. Now, if your business is really popular, you might be sending five, 10, 15,000 emails a month, and boy, is that gonna set you back $1.40 a month. If you're just getting started, 1,000 emails is only 10 cents. What a great deal. All right, so I went ahead and I chose a plan here. I've got the 10 cents a month, 1,000 emails. All right, so I'm gonna close out of this screen and there's just a few more steps to get Elastic Email set up. Now, notice right here, we've got an API key. If I click on this, I'm going to see the actual API key that I can use on a site-by-site -site basis. More on this later, but park it in your memory. All right, after this, there is the View and Verify Domains option. I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna add the domain that I want to actually send from. Now you can add more than one domain. So if you have multiple clients all sending emails from the same server, or you want to use the same Elastic email account, you can just add them all right here. They're gonna give you some records to verify the emails to make sure that they get delivered. 
This is what your cloud provider was probably not doing for you. Or if they did, they have so many email accounts on that same server that you could get into the spam box just because the website next to you is selling little blue pills. Now to get my domain verified, I actually need to click on this little help doc right down here, which I'm gonna open in a new tab. And we're gonna click on the second item in the table of contents, which is a bunch of different DNS records that we need to add over to our DNS system. I'm gonna show you how to set this up because I don't think I've ever done this on the channel. So I'm gonna open up my handy dandy pay stack here. I use this all the time, every single day. If you don't have a pay stack, you need to get one. Uh, this allows me to copy multiple things in order and then paste them all at one time. I'm using a Mac app called Paste for this. If you're curious, it's on Setapp and I've covered it in other videos on my channel. I'll link to those as well. Now I'm gonna grab an SPF record here. I'm doing this on a root domain, meaning that I'm not using a subdomain. So I don't need this second record because you can see that the name is subdomain, but I actually just want the root domain here. So that's gonna apply to a lot of these records. So for DKIM, I've got a DKIM key I'm going to add. We're just getting the name and value for all of these. Everything else is not helpful or not necessary for our current situation. Um, again, here is a subdomain record, so we can skip past this one. And then we'll go to the tracking. So Elastic Email is gonna track opens, clicks, and unsubscribes. So we will do this with a CNAME record. And once again, if you're using a subdomain, they have instructions for you. Now there are two more types of records that we generally need for email. One is called an MX record, and that is for receiving email. So we don't need to set that up for Elastic Email because we're not sending any email to them. We're already using Rackspace for that. And by the way, when you sign up for Rackspace, I mentioned that there's some records. They're actually gonna email those to you as well. Here's what that looks like. It just came into my inbox. I thought it was important. You don't have to go looking for a help doc. They'll actually send it right to your inbox. But back on track, now we're setting up Elastic Email. So we're skipping MX records. We don't need any of those. The last type of record is called a DMARC record. And this has to do with making sure that no one's hijacking your email account. It's very important to have a DMARC record set up, but it's a little bit technical to do so. So if you already have one, you're good to go. Otherwise they link to Elastic Email's DMARC generator, or you can also use Cloudflare. I happen to use Cloudflare for managing DNS. And if you just go over to email, they have DMARC management right here and they'll get you set up. It's totally free by the way. So use one of these services and just make sure you have the proper setup for DMARC. If you wanna know more about DMARC, drop me a comment down below. Maybe I'll make a dedicated video on that very fascinating subject. But I'm essentially ready to go here. I just need to head over to Cloudflare, add in my records. The first one was a text record. I'm going to paste in the name and the value into the content field here and hit save. Then I will go ahead and create a, another text record, paste in the name and value, hit save. And finally, I had a C name. Paste in the name and the value. Make sure to turn off the proxy status if you're using Cloudflare as well and hit save. All right, that's it. I should be verified with Elastic Email. To double check, I can just enter in my domain and hit verify. And it's gonna go through and I should see a bunch of green check marks here, hopefully. Well, I got two out of four. I just changed the record, so we'll try again. I got tracking and and you know what? I don't have a DMARC record set up. I expected to have no X next to MX because remember, we don't need that, but I should go ahead and set up a DMARC record. We'll enable management here, hit add. It makes the record for me. Now there's a lot more to DMARC than just clicking that button in Cloudflare, but that'll get you by. And there we go. I am now verified. All right, we'll close out of this. And the last thing to do is actually to connect this add-on to our server. So I'm gonna go back over to my servers, choose my latest server here and down to SMTP. And now I can choose the Elastic Email option, enable it, it's configuring. And there we go, now Elastic Email is set up on my server. I can even send a test email. There we go, we're sending the test email. And here it is, here's my test email, hit the inbox right away. All right, so now we have SMTP configured at the server level. This is great, but what if you don't wanna use Elastic Email? There is the option to use any other SMTP provider. We can click right here and choose your own SMTP provider. There's a bunch of API integrations with services like Mailgun, Mandrill, Auth SMTP, or SendGrid, but you can always choose another SMTP provider. Just enter in your login credentials, the you know server name, and you are off and running, able to use really any provider that you like. Now, 
I'd still probably recommend using an API connection. It's going to be more reliable. And if you send any volume, it's probably going to be more affordable as well. But uh, what if we wanted to do something on a site-by-site -site basis? Well, it's WordPress. We can do whatever we like. Remember in our add-ons, there was that API key. I can go ahead and grab this. I could install any SMTP plugin that I want. Fluent SMTP is one I like. I'll choose that. And then when I go to configure it, I can choose any of these providers that I want, or I could even just use Elastic Email at this level, at the site level, and never configure it at the server level. I would just paste in the API key right here, save my connection. We can even send a test email from Fluent SMTP if we prefer. And there it is, it comes right through. Now, why am I doing this? What was wrong with the server setup? Well, there's nothing wrong with the server setup. That was all just fine. But you might want to actually send that third type of emails from your website as well, marketing emails. In this case, you can use a tool like Fluent SMTP to connect up Elastic Email for your transactional emails and use their routing feature to connect another service like Postmark or Amazon AWS's SES service for sending your marketing emails. There are tons of great newsletter plugins for WordPress now, like Fluent CRM. Here's a totally free version. I can install this, hit activate. And once I go through their setup process, there we go, I'm all done. Well, now I can actually send out emails right from inside of WordPress and I can cancel those expensive active campaign or MailChimp subscriptions. The key here would be that I would set up my elastic email messages to come from maybe a support email address like support at your domain.com. I mark the email type as transactional. If that's what you're using it for, you could send marketing emails with elastic email as well. The important thing here is that we're segmenting our transactional emails from our marketing emails. And then using Fluent SMTP, I can add another connection using any of their supported providers. So if I wanted to connect up AWS, I can repeat this process and then I want to set up my from email address to be whatever address I'm going to use for my marketing messages, which might be my personal email address. Now, once all of this is configured, I just need to set up WordPress in general to send most of its messages from my support email address, but my newsletters will go out from my own email address, Dave at, in this case, droplet-dash.com. That's really easy in Fluent CRM. You'll go to email settings and just set your from email address here. To change things like receipts sent from WooCommerce, just go to WooCommerce, Settings, choose the Emails tab, and then scroll down until you see the from address. And in this case, I've entered in support at dropletdash.com. Now all of my support emails will go through my Cloudways Elastic email add-on, but all of my marketing messages will go through Amazon SES. Now, my reason for doing this, if I haven't been totally clear, is to keep everything separate. Your transactional emails, your receipts, are on one path, those are going through Elastic Email, and then the marketing messages, the ones that might potentially get marked as spam because they are marketing messages, and sometimes people just click spam on those, well, those are gonna go out through an entirely different provider. Because Cloudways provides us with an API key, that's what allows us to do this, and we can actually use this API key on any WordPress website that's using Elastic Email, as long as we verify the domain with Elastic Email. All right, from personal emails to transactional emails and even incorporating some marketing emails into the mix, Cloudways has our back, has us covered for sending out emails from our website. So that's one less reason to hesitate from moving away from your shared provider over to a much more powerful and stable solution using Cloudways as your control panel. That's gonna do it for this video. I hope it's been helpful. I'm sure it raised a few questions. If you have any, drop me a message down below. I'd be happy to try to help you out through the comments. But otherwise, you can check out clientamp.com. You can work with me there one-on-one -on -one or get subscribed to our free email newsletter. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Click that like button if you haven't done so. And that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.